Okay, so let's move on to another type of bifurcation. This one is called a pitchfork bifurcation, and it's named for the trident-like shape that appears on the bifurcation diagram, and I'll, and I'll draw that right now. The bifurcation diagram of a pitchfork bifurcation looks a little bit like this, and so as you can see, it looks a little bit like a trident, and that's why we call it a pitchfork bifurcation. Um, basically, what this bifurcation diagram is, is it's a very useful opportunity for us to analyze at what point does our parameter give rise to a new set of fixed points or a different type of fixed point? So if we were to look actually at our example from before, we would see a bifurcation diagram that looks a little something like this. So the C value of 1 was our bifurcation. So notice that the C is on the horizontal axis and actually it's X that's on the vertical axis. So these are bifurcation diagrams. Um, and they are an opportunity for us to model what sort of behavior we're seeing when we adjust a parameter on a family of discrete dynamical systems. One of the things about the pitchfork bifurcation and about actually most bifurcations is that the type of points changes as well as the number of fixed points. And so what we see in a pitchfork bifurcation, one particular instance of the family of curves could look like this. And then, after some time, what we would have is a curve that looks a little bit more like this. So as you can see, the right-hand graph is passing through the y equals x line at three different intervals. And so there's three fixed points there. But on the left-hand side, there's only one fixed point. But at some particular value, this family of dynamical systems went from having one fixed point to having three. And so that's why we draw a bifurcation diagram that looks like this. Now remember, the horizontal axis in these above two cases is the x-axis, but the horizontal axis in a bifurcation diagram is always the parameter. For all values that were less than 1, we only had one fixed point until we reached the value of 1, in which case our repelling fixed point became attracting, but remained at 0. But two new fixed points appeared when we passed the bifurcation value, and those started moving further and further away from the origin. And so we, what we now see is that for values of C that are greater than 1, we have three fixed point, two that are repelling and one that is attracting. And the attracting one is drawn in red, and the repelling fixed points are drawn in blue. Okay, let's move on to the third type of bifurcation that we're going to look at, and this is called a period doubling bifurcation. It's named for the style of the bifurcation instead of the shape of the bifurcation diagram. Where only a fixed point once was, a two cycle appears when the slope of a discrete dynamical system passes through negative one. And so let's take a look here at what that means. This particular dynamical system doesn't pass through the y equals x line at a slope of negative one at any point. But at a certain point, if we were to continue to push this parabola down, we'd get to a point where the parabola intersects with the y equals x line at a point where the slope that intersects the y equals x line is negative 1. And when that happens, what you get is you get an orbit that suddenly acts as a 2 cycle. And so what that means is we've just gone from having two plain old fixed points on this red parabola to suddenly having a moment where we have a fixed point but we also have two period two points. And of course, we also have a fixed point up here and to the right still. And so this is why it's called a period doubling bifurcation, because as we moved the red parabola down, we held on to our fixed point, but we suddenly had a moment where uh, a fixed point sort of split and became not just a fixed point, but also a fixed point with a period two point as well. Um, now let's look briefly at what the bifurcation diagram of a period doubling bifurcation looks like. And so both of these white tick marks that I'm identifying, those are both bifurcation locations. Don't let the fact that it looks like a pitchfork bifurcation fool you, because the difference between this bifurcation and, and a pitchfork bifurcation is that this one gives rise to period points, not just regular fixed points. Okay, so just to recap what we've looked over in this video, a bifurcation value is a moment when a parameter change leads to a behavioral change in a family of DDSs. The number of fixed points and period points was um, some sort of a thing, and then when you reach the bifurcation value, the roles change and there's a different set of things going on. And a bifurcation value can increase or decrease the number of fixed points 
and can change the type of the fixed point. So you can suddenly go from having no fixed points to having one or two, or you can have a fixed point give rise to a period doubling point. And in this class, we're concerned with recognizing tangent, pitchfork, and period doubling bifurcations. And so it'll do you well to get some experience in looking what different examples of tangent, pitchfork, and period doubling bifurcations look like so that you'll be able to identify and classify them and analyze them and make some conclusions based on that. And it'll be very helpful to you as you're studying discrete dynamical systems.